2016 Kia K900 V6. Tempted as we may be to wax humorous about the automotive aberration that is the Kia K900, we're not going there. As an automaker, Kia may have been regarding as an easy joke at one time, but no one's laughing now. And you know what they say about making the same mistake twice. But the K900 isn't quite there yet. It's merely an okay car playing in a field that's full of far better alternatives wearing more prestigious badges. Kia's entire US history is one of introducing not quite their products at a bargain price, then incorporating the resulting feedback into improvements for each succeeding generation until, well, where did all those sales come from? For now, then, regard the K900 as Kia's first toe in more luxurious waters. Its primary purpose here is to occupy space in the showroom, telling those shopping $18,000 Souls and $30,000 Optimus that, when they're ready for a leather line $60,000 Luxo sedan, they can come back to Kia for that, too. And it's doing a great job of sitting in those showrooms. Automotive news data shows that in any given month, Lexus usually sells roughly 4.5 times as many of its Ella sedans and Cadillac about 14 times as many of its XTS sedans as Kia pedals K900s. In 2015, Kia sold a grand total of 2,524 K900s in the United States. The only reason you don't read headlines about Kia failing to hit its K900 sales target is that the company wisely declined to share any such goals. Lowering the buy-in The usual response to slow sales, a price cut, took place late last year, corresponding to the addition of the new entry-level K900 tested here that drops the base price below $50,000. That's for the base V6 premium model, which still includes navigation, leather, and a panoramic sunroof but offers a V6 in place of a Plevel model's 420 horsepower 5.0-liter V8, which has served in the K900 since early 2014. Our test example was the next step up, mid-level V6 luxury model, with premium sound, Napa leather, and real wood trim, carrying a base price of $55,850, to which the VIP package added another $5,000. The VIP bundle packs in a heap of technology, including a head-up display, automatic emergency braking, blind spot detection, lane departure warning, rear cross-traffic alert, and adaptive cruise control. The package also brings a powered lower cushion extender for the driver's seat, powered front headrests, powered lumbar supports for front and rear passengers, reclining and ventilated rear seats, an upgraded headliner, and soft closed doors. In usual Kaya fashion, it's a lot of car for $60,850. Still, $60,000 is a long reach beyond the $45,000 sticker on a fully loaded Cadenzo, the brand's next most expensive offering. For 2016, the two V8 trim levels were condensed into a single luxury model that starts at $62,850. At the same time, it's at least $16,000 less than the Lexus LS 460L. And cornering? It feels as if a time exposure photograph at night would reveal the taillights tracing a contorted corkscrew shape through the air as the car wanders around in vain search of the driver's intended dark. We don't expect performance coupe handling in a luxury sedan that prioritizes a soft, compliant ride, but it's also easy to see why Hyundai brought in consultants from Lotus to refine the suspension of the all-new 2015 Genesis. This platform, which was used by the previous generation Genesis, is ill-suited for driving outside of urban centers. The K900's combination of flaccid handling, floaty ride, and vague steering has often triggered comparisons to old-school Detroit sedans, mostly from reviewers who clearly have little experience with the real thing beyond reading the descriptions penned by grizzled veterans. The K900 is nothing like those cars except in the broadest terms of being heavy, extra large, rear drive, and, only sometimes, now, V8 powered. Its suspension's worst misbehaviors barely graze those that the body on frame, leaves prone, live axle Detroit's axe cart could exhibit back in the waning days of the previous century. 
The K900 also is built to a much higher quality standard on a sufficiently rigid and quiet structure. No rattles, no squeaks. It's a modern car from its tire tread to its rooftop shark bin, just one that could use more refinement. Which is to say certain granddads might be delighted, although if they're still driving rather than riding, we'd probably recommend looking into a Cadillac XDS. Otherwise, to buy these. Not very many people. Yet. After Kia replaces this model with one based on the most recent Genesis, though, well, please remember that we didn't laugh this time.